Hi guys, it's Rihanna. Welcome back to episode five of In Bed With. <laughs> <laughs> this is not even, like, sorry, I've, you'll have to cut before I crack up, I guess. I've got VR from his channel, Vegan Revolution. Hi VR. Hi, yeah, this is a little collaboration, or so, a hijack. <laughs> I don't think it is a hijack though, is yeah, it? What's going, on, what's going on with the balaclava? Do Basically, you know, um, to sometimes people, vegans, uh, get called like terrorists or extremists. Mm. Yeah. And I'm like, great, let's be extreme. <laughs> like, let's own it. And I, 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 when people say you're a terrorist, I'm like, if you're terrorising animals, then I'm a terrorist to you. Yeah. I think our channel approaches are pretty different. I think you need to change your approach. You need to be more militant. I don't know, like my viewers seem to, they, they seem to like and respond to me being a bit softly yeah, spoken, a bit yeah. moderate. Guys, if you agree, you have to comment below. I mean, you're not going to catch me in one of those balaclavas. Right, so where were we? So do you want to tell my viewers a little bit about your channel then? Uh, kind of, yeah, really briefly. I mean, to me, uh, there's three really powerful documentaries that I think have made a lot of differences. Forks Over Knives does the health. Uh, Earthlings does the the kind of the ethics and then Cowspiracy does the environment. That's considered like the trifecta, okay? It's like kind of uh, health environment ethics. But I felt like there was a fourth one that was missing um, and I've tried to tap into that, which is the idea that with supply and demand or demand and supply, I think it should be the other way around. A lot of people have been tricked into thinking they need something they don't and marketing is like realising you've been lied to through propaganda. Mm -hmm. And I, I consider that sort of my area of interest and hopefully developing it into an area of expertise. Mm -hmm. So my channel is all about culture jamming the advertising. And by that, I mean like kind of twisting on its head. So you kind of see the lie, but then you will also, every time you see the advert or something, you remember my version of it. Mm -hmm. So it's like hijacking uh, their advert, but also just kind of analyzing the media, the lies we're being told and actually just looking at like why, why we're being told that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're quite infamous on Twitter as being like, cons like you're quite, you're a bit offensive. Um, I'm not saying you're offensive, but you're kind of known for possibly sometimes saying things that are quite offensive. People tell me I'm offensive and I say, I'm not offensive, you're offended by me. So I like to try and shift the blame to the fact that um, mm -hmm. it's it's kind of like saying, uh, what was it, like with a massage, it's kind of going, oh, you're being too tough. And it's like, no, your body's just not ready for this yet because <laughs> okay. you've developed the knots. It's, it's, it's your fault for sort of not being comfortable and I, I've always been someone who's grown up where if there's an elephant in the room it's like let's talk about it mm -hmm. so how, that's that's how I like to approach things how do you find people respond though when you kind of put the <laughs> lost a few friends <laughs> and, yeah and um but I think it has got a lot of non-vegans talking about it and I'm, I'm specifically inflammatory on twitter um like for youtube I'm directing my stuff more at vegans to inspire them to do more activism yeah okay um but with Twitter, I'm trying to communicate with non-vegans to spread my message through upsetting them in a way that is also, if they read it properly, uh, is like ethically accurate. So they'll be like, you're being unethical, mm -hmm. but it's actually due to their lack of ethics that they think that. But how effective <laughs> yeah. do you think it is when you're being so abrasive and they're like responding negatively? The way I see it is like if, if someone grows up their whole life, and I mean, I still find it where... If I go into Burger King and I go, oh, have you got any vegan options? I like to do that. Mm. I'm not allowed to be served. I'm not allowed to be served with dollars. I literally want a vegan option. I want the ethical option. You're not allowed to record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not allowed to record. Like wherever I go, just to kind of get into people's heads. The yeah. people always go, oh, what's, what's vegan? Okay, so they don't even know what it and is. So they still so. don't know what it is. And I yeah. think like... It's not my job necessarily to persuade them what vegan is, but to at least let them know that it, like, it's not invisible to their life anymore. Yeah. And if I can do that, then it means that it, they're now responsible for being aware that there's another way to live. And most people think you need meat to live. Yeah, yeah definitely. You need, they think you need butchered animals to survive. Um, healthy and all the rest of it. They've been taught that. So even if I'm pissing them off, I'm getting into their head. Vegan Games has been really successful at it as well. 
I felt like what well, I, I was doing it first on Twitter, he's turned into a really powerful way of doing it on YouTube, mm-hmm. where he's teaching people how to be healthier, um, showing them all the science, doing all the research, but then trolling them enough that stupid people who don't actually want to learn anything yeah. are kind of doing it by accident. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, like People probably learn more about health from him than they ever have at like, uh, you know, food tech in school. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Although I think the trolls he gets on his channel are like the best. When I like go and look on the, he, if, if we yeah. can rate trolls as being like on a scale, he of uses his trolls. That's the, if you yeah. use the trolls, like um, you end up with a troll army. You put the rain on the <laughs> trolls, and then next thing you know, you can kind of manipulate them to spread your message. <laughs> so yeah, I like um, one of the things that I've sort of uh, been talking about a lot is that. Um, you, there's no such thing as a vegan troll it's a gargoyle okay okay <laughs> and the whole idea is that um uh, like a troll is someone who tries to lower you down to their level to, mm-hmm. because relatively they feel good about themselves because yeah. if they're like oh everyone's better than me but then they piss them all off and make their life so rubbish that uh they're like yes they're at least on my level now yeah okay. and it's trying to make yourself feel good in relative terms like vegans actually have a purpose behind what we're doing and if you look at the architecture of gargoyles on churches they're these very ugly things that look offensive and you're like, oh, why would you want that on a church? But it's actually to um, protect the sanctuary that's behind it, like Mm -hmm. keep it a safe space. Mm -hmm. And the idea is it's like you need a little bit of ugliness and a bit of sort of pagan, uh, sort of like a pagan sort of troll that's on the side of good and has a purpose to keep the trolls at bay. Okay. Okay. So we're not not trolls, we're gargoyles. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. That's new one for me. Yeah. So so you're quite big big on um, kind of exploring language. Especially yeah. language that people respond to quite strongly. Well, to me, I mean, like, if you think about advertising, they put so much money into creating these images. But, like, on Twitter, if you've got a good handle on words, like, I've always loved rap battles growing up. Yeah. Like, I was always just entertaining because it's like this kind of debate, but through people's linguistic skills. Mm-hmm. And I kind of see it as like you can almost get into a Twitter battle with someone, and it's, it's, uh, it's very Harry Potter. It's like, I know the, I can spell these words, spells, uh, these are curse words. Um, and let's have and it becomes rather a, a physical battle between the two of you. It's mm-hmm. a battle of your words, mm-hmm. and all that's really happening is the concepts are kind of entering this middle ground, and then you're having a debate. Yeah. And uh, some of it is for entertainment to kind of draw other people in, but ultimately it's a war of ideologies. Mm-hmm. So yeah, and um, yeah, I enjoy it, and I enjoy like tearing apart the language people use, and really you can see people's thought patterns and the words that they choose to then kind of use it against them, and ultimately you're trying to help them. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure they see that at the beginning or... They don't have to, they don't have to, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think, and I'm always getting better at it, and I do look back at some of my other stuff and I'm like, I used to really engage in the canine argument. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, oh, we have canines, and I'd get into it, and I was a little bit immature at that point. Mm -hmm. But now I've realised you don't need to know that a hippo has massive canines and it's a herbivore. And you, it, telling them that isn't going to turn them vegan. No, that's and true, so yeah. If the aim uh, is to turn them vegan, you want to get there in the straightest line possible. Mm-hmm. So the best thing is they argue with you. They go, oh, but we've got canines. Instead of being like, that's really stupid, here's the science and all that. They just go like, why are you eating dead animals? Like, Why don't you try veganism? <laughs> yeah. Have you ever tried it before? And they go, no, I haven't. And I'm like, you'll, you'll enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just and skip the argument. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think it's kind of one of those things where like, Jazz musicians learn scales so that they can sort of play the improvised stuff. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like you have to learn all the information of veganism to then let it go again. Or like martial arts, you have to learn to fight so that you never do. Don't you think that's a confidence thing though? Like I think vegans need to feel like they have their their head around the arguments so that when people do attack them, they then can feel confident to then, like you say, skip the argument, go straight to, well, just why are you eating dead animals? Because then you would be confident yeah. enough to not engage with well, that. Well, there's that moment where it's like, right, I know what B12 is. I'm ready. Yeah, and then you yeah. start talking to someone, they go, where'd you get D3 from? And you're like, what the hell is D3? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have to look it up and then you're like, oh, okay. And then, then you look up a website. And then but the thing is, you only learn it when you start to have those arguments. So yeah. it's almost being prepared to look a little bit stupid in the first place yeah, to build yeah. a body of knowledge. Mm-hmm. And then to let it go where you go... Yeah, I know about D3, but look, we don't need to eat animals, it's weird. The truth is, though, like, if someone is, if someone truly believes and wants to believe and wants to continue making excuses as to why they couldn't possibly go vegan, they're going to keep doing that for X amount of time, pretty much no matter how well you argue. Well, it's how marketing works. Like, if you want to convince someone to wear Nike shoes, mm. Nike shoes, whatever it is, mm. it's, um, no one's saying, like, oh, these shoes are... 
you know, they you don't go, oh, they cost this much. They'll last about sort of 15 months. They're made out of these plastics. Mm-hmm. They go like, you'll feel like a superstar. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah. so you tell people how they're going to feel. Yeah. And the, the best way to do any sort of advertising is to always just like, everyone wants to feel good so and like, veganism yeah. makes you feel good. Yeah, yeah. But the thing right. is, in order to get there, there's a little painful process where you have to say, I was wrong. Mm-hmm. There is, I was wrong as soon as you dealt with it. Mm-hmm. I've noticed on um, Vegan Sidekick's Instagram, whenever he interacts with any non-vegan and they attack him with lots of things he doesn't he doesn't really give them answers he actually just poses lots of questions to them what do you think about that yeah i think listening to them as well i mean one of the things i learned from um you know there's the film the wolf of wall street uh mm-hmm. martin yeah. scorsese film yeah. uh i looked into the real life guy and the, the real life guy giving a lecture is better than this like big hollywood blockbuster yeah. where um his whole thing is he like he's he's like the ultimate salesman mm-hmm. And he said, uh, a lot of the time, people wasting time on the phone going, oh, you're, you're into like basketball, are you? Oh, that, that's really interesting. Oh, my son plays basketball too. And then they talked to him about how they were similar. Okay. And he saw it as a massive waste of time. Like, you, all you need to be doing is calling them up. And like you, you ask them what they want, and then you give it to them. And in the film, yeah. one of the best examples of that is he goes, like, he goes, like, try and sell me this pen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, and so the idea is, is like, you find out what they would need a pen for. You go like, what do you do with your life? And then you go, oh, you need a pen for this. And they go, oh yeah, I would. Okay. Like instead yeah. of going like, this pen like it's shiny and it's <laughs> cheap and like no one cares. They just want to think how they're going to use it. Yeah. So if you if someone's really concerned about their acne, and you they're still having like uh, dairy, mm-hmm. you can just be like, look, this is going to help clear up your acne. Your life be that. easier. And like, you might not get them to turn vegan, but they might just consider giving up the dairy. They might notice the results, and then they're more inclined to come back and listen to the rest of what you say. Mm-hmm. So I think like studying marketing is one of the best ways to like. And th- this is the mad thing is we're we're trying to sell veganism, but we're not making any money out of it really. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And people have become so <laughs> like. McDonald's says, I'm loving it. And really, it gets you to recite, I'm loving it. It goes, mm. da, 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 da. And they, then they cut out the the end bit where yeah. it goes, I'm loving it. Now people recite it to it. themselves yeah, to finish true, yeah. the call and response. They finish it. Mm. They say it to themselves, I'm loving it. And then it becomes like a mantra that they've got caught into with the advertising. Mm-hmm. And people have like, I reckon the reason people are scared of clowns, like there's a lot of people scared of clowns this generation, is because they grew up as children looking at one waving to them on the box while they ate a corpse and there's some sort of connection there. <laughs> if you want something to smile about, just say cheeseburger at McDonald's. McDonald's land, McDonald's, McDonald's land. Like it's messed up. That's right. <laughs> but I think it's um yeah, and I, but I think like on some level, people know that they've been cheated and they've been tricked, and so it's uh, people are quite suspicious of anyone trying to give them anything. Yeah, and as vegans, we're actually decent people. We're just like we want to help. We want to make the world a more harmonious place. And people are like, oh, this is the vegan agenda. Yeah, I hate and I that. don't know what that means. No, no, same. I, I keep getting that. You, you and your one one track minded vegan agenda. That's been the thing that's been like. I mean, I am quite one track minded, but like ultimately, all it is is like let's just make the world a better place. <laughs> That's it. But it's funny like, when they say one track minded because obviously someone who's anti vegan is like pretty one track minded and not open to other ideas either. Or zero track minded. Yeah, zero. Track-minded. Prefer That's to have it. one track playing than nothing. Yeah, yeah, I think some people some people can get jealous of the fact that you've found something to be passionate about because mm-hmm. uh, they can be a bit empty. And rather than being like, oh, I could have that too if I learn it from you, they just go like the trolling. They just go, I I want to knock you down and embarrass you that you've got a passion so that yeah. we're level again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we're trying to bring them up to our level, and they're trying to bring them down to our level. And uh, it shouldn't be a battle. It should just be like we're trying to help. We're trying to show you. Yeah. Uh, something yeah. amazing yeah so that's that uh, it's uh and like I, the, veganism is an evolving like i'm a vegan and but what that means is it's like i'm always looking to sort of better what i do and if i learn new things and it isn't in line with my beliefs as what i should be doing then i'll change it and to me like my life is no longer choices i make mm-hmm. it's just me fitting what i do around the concept of veganism so mm-hmm. I, i'm no longer responsible I, I don't go oh but the consequences of that mean that it'll be bad for me i just go what's the most vegan thing to do okay and so like with you like i find it really interesting because like, i first mocked people who would uh like seen your channel you do the whole uh menstrual cycle information mm-hmm. stuff i used to mock the whole idea like vegan festivals people selling the the sanitary towels uh, what are they called the um cloth pads yeah i still don't know much about it menstrual cups yeah yeah uh, the moon why cups, did you sorry. mock it at the beginning because i picked it up not knowing what it was and then my mate laughed at me and i was like Ugh, and like okay. really like, uh, teenage blood, yeah. boy reaction 
And let's talk, I was going to say this for this, right? <laughs> so, okay, I've got a few bad period blood experiences that have like, I'm aware that they've scarred me and it's a bit irrational. <laughs> but my mates, while I was asleep, my mates, um, we went round a mate's house. She's got a, like a French mum, the kind of a little villa in Somerset. It's a very French feel to it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and there's blood all over the floor. And I was like, someone cut themselves. And his mum just pops her head around the corner and just goes, the dog is on heat. <laughs> like that. And we're like, what? And she's like, oh, the dog, period, on heat. And we're like, okay. And we like didn't fully understand. And I was like, dogs having his period is true. And I was like, do animals have periods? Like, I was really naive, like 14 or whatever. Didn't really teach us it in sexual education, sex education. And um, I fell asleep because I was really tired. We'd cycled a long way to this mate's house, been up for a while. And uh, my mates put dog period blood in my mouth while I was asleep. <laughs> um, and... And I woke up with the taste of it in my mouth and like, and they, they positioned it, like they kind of drawn it onto my face and like collected it off the floor. And I think I had a bit of a gag reflex to that and it's always associated like, if a woman's on a period, there's this kind of cringeworthy moment where I remember like having dog period blood in my mouth. That's terrible. So there you go. <laughs> have you got, have you got any others to share? I'm sure my viewers will enjoy this. Well, I told you the other one earlier, which... Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I I genuinely think like it's it's good if you're open about stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm all about being open about stuff, like the whole truthful thing. But like this one girl was a bit sneaky about the fact she was on a period when we slept together, and I, I woke up to her the next day, and she'd already disappeared, like gone to work, and there was a lot of blood everywhere. And I just kind of wish she told me because I didn't really know what I was engaging in. And she was she, she was actually like she switched the lights off before she got in, like she took some of her clothes off, like and she kind of tricked me into it. But. <laughs> And it's kind of weird, like, I mean, it's, I, I'm not going to say rapey, but it was like, I think she was that horny and she knew that I might not want to if she said it. I mean, she guys, hid it from me. Some That's guys weird. say no, yeah. Some guys do say no and they don't want to, but I think... I'd have liked to at least nine before I entered Yeah, I mean, you, ju- it, you yeah. just say, I'm on my period, like, I'm cool with it or I'm, I'm not cool with it or whatever. And then that's it, isn't it? Pretty, it's pretty easy. I think she knew the story about the dog and she thought it meant that we wouldn't sleep together that night. And... Oh, okay. <laughs> just put a towel down. I mean, guys watching at home, have you... Have you ever had an experience where you've like hidden your period from the person that you want to have sex with? It's quite. I mean, I I don't know how like polite we need to be on your chat, but like, um, <laughs> and you're pretty open about all this stuff. Yeah, it's like, yeah, 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 yeah it's, it's fine. fine. But like, guy, I think it's quite understandable if guys don't want to go down on women when they've got their period. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't expect someone to, to be <laughs> yeah, honest. Okay, so cool. like, I, I wouldn't be like, much. get down there. <laughs> but I've heard it is a good source of B twelve. Oh. <laughs> Too much. <laughs> Sure yeah, sure. but like I'm, I'm no. One of the things that like, I mean, you've got all the kind of you're well clued up on it. Um, what got you into it though? Like it was after I went vegan, and I was I was just trying to think about other ways I could sort of be environmentally friendly, and then I started thinking. I was about, by, yeah by the veganism. Yeah, yeah so yeah, I, cool. I was thinking of all the things I did that were disposable. Yeah. And the funny thing is, I'd actually bought a moon cup about five years before I went vegan. And I tried to insert. Why are they called it. moon cups? It's just a brand. It's just a brand. Oh, okay, name. it's like Hoover um, or something. Yeah. And, you know, like with periods, sometimes it's called like moon cycle. Oh, moon makes yeah, it. Yeah, of course. Yeah. That's why. Yeah. But yeah, it's just a brand. Like there's so many different menstrual cup brands. I think in the UK, like people who first see moon cups at vegan festivals, they assume that that's the only one. But there's so many. There's just tons. And I got, as I said, a moon cup five years before I went vegan. I tried to insert it. It was the most painful, horrible experience. Did you insert it? Yeah, into your vagina. It's like a t- it's like <laughs> Not a my vagina. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. So yeah, you kind of have to fold it. Oh, it's a shame I don't have one here and then I could like do a show and tell. Wait one minute. <laughs> so now we have one here, I can show you. So this is a Ruby cup. So this is just one of the brands of cup. But yeah, well, if you th- you didn't think you inserted it, what did you think you did with it? I thought, you know, like put it in I grew nipples. up not eating eggs as well. Um, like I grew up vegetarian, but we never ate eggs. And I always yeah. found it really weird that um, they're called egg cups, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I thought it was essentially just an egg cup but like uh, a bit easier to wash maybe. And like basically okay. you just, like I, it makes sense because you don't just sit there and let it sort of drain out of you and then get on no, with your life. It has you, to be in you. And like. how would you be able to like pull your knickers up? Well, I thought you just stopped what you were doing and like, oh my God, did I, you I have no idea. Yeah, I'm pretty clueless about this. Okay, Sorry, so everyone. this bit I'm yeah. going to teach you. So yeah. this is inserted into a woman's vagina when she's on her period. Yeah, it's just... yeah you can touch her, it's fine. <laughs> I sterilise them like in between. Sterilise them, yeah. Um, so this one's like, it's like a medium resistance, so they have like some are like much firmer, so, yeah. some are like really soft. Some have. Why would like you want a, a firmer one? 
um, if you do a lot of sport or if you're a gymnast, then if you have a really soft oh, cup, when to, you're like, your yeah. muscles would move and then the cup would potentially like crumble and then it would leak while it was inside you if you were like a gymnast. Um, okay. So if you're like really sporty, you shouldn't get a softer cup. It's just. Has he got measurements on the inside? Yeah, they don't all have measurements, but that one does. So that's actually quite useful if you want to see how much blood you're losing each day. Is it called blood? I mean, is it menstrual, the same as blood? Or menses or menstrual blood? Is it different from blood? Is it different? Well, it's a combination of things, but like when you have a period, you know, it's the lining of your your uterus that you're shedding, and um, because right, yeah, the egg yeah, hasn't I attached that. Yeah. inside. I remember um, seeing animations of that in school yeah, when they exactly. it briefly. So it's, it's not just blood, it's a combination of the lining of your uterus, which is why as women's, it, as that is shedding, it can be thicker and it can like form sort of blood clot sort kind of things. You've probably never seen... I know the rasters when they, they call people pussy clap. Oh, okay, like blood yeah. clap, pussy clap. Yeah. <laughs> that's like, it's, um, that's a reference to like sort of uh, vagina blood. Okay, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> sounds it. Menstrual blood. So yeah. there's, there's lots of different clap. folds that you can do to insert it. So this is the seven fold. And then like some women put like lube here, like a water-based lubricant. Oh, so you bend it, put it in. Yeah, and then you put it in there and then it, like inside it pops open and it forms a seal around the inside of your the walls of your vagina. Yeah, it makes sense. And then you have to like turn it to make sure that it's properly suctioned. How does that suctioned. feel? To be honest, when it's properly in, you've got it inserted, you can't feel it like at all. Cannot feel it. It's amazing. And people only want to talk about what's relevant to them, but I think a big part of veganism is wanting to do what's beyond you. And I think understanding, like, this is good education for me. And I suppose, like, on some level, so, like, uh, I mean, feminism is not just about females. Like, the whole concept of circumcision to me is, um, like, a fo- it's weird. Like, you're cutting off part of a baby's body without their consent. It's interesting because all the men in my family are circumcised. Is it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because my dad's... Kind of, well, he was raised Muslim. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I so, didn't realise how common it was. At yeah, first, I thought it was a yeah. Jewish thing, but like most of America's circumcised. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they are. Um, I've it's, talked about this on the podcast uh, okay. in the past, but this is something that blew my mind. Um, you know, Oprah Winfrey, mm. she brought out a face cream, and um, well, she didn't bring it out, she was the face of the mm. face cream, right? And they paid her a lot of money to do it. And then, um, like, a lot of money, because, you know, she's being America, and it's like, oh, you know, look young all your life like Oprah Winfrey. Um, People looked into what one of the ingredients were that didn't make any sense at the time, and they'd given it, you know, like, E120 is, like, cochineal or something. They'd given it some names. Someone looked into what it was, and it wasn't traceable. And so they were like... (laughs) What the hell was it? It was uh, children's foreskin. (gasps) Yeah. Children's foreskin cells. How could that even be in a, a yeah. cream? Yeah. And that's what it was really expensive, this cream, but one of the ingredients was foreskin skin. Well, I guess, they're not, really, skin. I guess they're not really that big, are they? So you'd have to have, like, multiple... I don't know how... Well, I think they might have, like, started cloning them. Uh, like, that's the cells... Because it's a bit like eyelid skin, I suppose. That's so weird. And so it's, like, to create soft skin on... Yeah, What so. properties do, does foreskin have in it that make it I don't know if the cream even worked. Yeah. For a cream... But, like, the more you start learning about, like, what's messed up in the world, there's a, like, if people can do it, they, they will. Yeah, they will, yeah. And they'll get away with it until they're exposed. Yeah. Um, but I don't know how Winfrey, like, I don't know if they told her about that when they did the contract. Weird, isn't it? That's really weird. It's, my mind has been blown yeah. by that. Also, this is really itchy. Like, how do you... You can take yours off if you want. You, we already know That's, what you look like. Go on, then. It's true, isn't it? Yeah. Ugh. I like to keep anonymous um, because I've been doing, like, in terms of undercover work and stuff, it's a lot easier when there's there's no trace of you on the internet. Okay. Um, But there's multiple reasons for doing it, and one of them is, um, like, I was originally a filmmaker, and I was into the whole kind of marketing, commercial filmmaking Mm -hmm. world, and um, I just found that a lot of it was bickering about names in the credits and, like, uh, the status of, oh, this is me, and I did this, Mm -hmm. rather than... And this is one of the things with the gargle, uh, uh, like, to extend it, is... Also, gargles, uh, it comes from like uh, the word gurgle because the idea is water flows through them. Mm-hmm. And I really like this idea. I think it's in uh, the Greeks had this where they were allowed to be proud of when they made something beautiful, um, like a sculpture or a poem or whatever, because they felt like it wasn't them. Uh, it was like a, a higher entity, like mm-hmm. channeling through their body. So okay. it, but it also meant that when they weren't inspired, it wasn't their fault. It just meant this thing wasn't channeling through them, so there was less pressure on themselves to make mm-hmm. things. And with gargles, they it'd be so easy as a child to look at them or sort of like a, any sort of like water fountain feature and see the water coming out of their mouth and be like, wow, they're, they're throwing up water. 
But actually, they're designed to be the spout so that when it, there's a heavy rain, yeah. the water comes out of their mouth. So yeah. like the water is actually coming from a higher source, but it looks like it's coming out of their mouth. Mm-hmm. And I like to think that when you start following the way of veganism, um, you kind of channel into something where it's kind of bigger than you. And so it's not really you anymore. It's like it's the water coming out of your mouth from a higher source. Yeah. Yeah. Can we talk a little bit about the um, what you mentioned about anonymity? Because I think yeah. that feeds in. It's really important in terms of... Uh, we talked about this a little bit yesterday about kind of ego in the vegan community and especially like within like maybe new vegan YouTubers or just vegan YouTubers generally like people wanting credit yeah. for things and just kind of only wanting their channel to grow rather than realizing that obviously being vegan is much bigger than any of us. Well, yeah. And I mean, it's one of the dangers is that a lot of the activists who did it when it wasn't popular and being vegan is weird as it shifts to like more common and there's this term, a hundredth monkey, you know, the hundredth monkey. Yeah. It's basically like, um, when, when, if they do, they found that if uh, they teach a monkey how to wash um, food that was sandy on an island, they had a bunch of monkeys on an island, they gave them food, but it gets sandy so they wouldn't eat it. And like over so many generations, uh, one of these apes like goes in, and washes it in the sea and then eats it. Yeah. And then another monkey sees it and copies it. But some of them, like, just would watch them do it and not do it. Mm, okay. And, like, so the idea is out of, like, a test <clears> experiment <throat> of a hundred, like, a controlled test experiment, a hundred monkeys, there's always the hundredth monkey to be like, oh, everyone else is doing it. I'll finally, like, the last one to do it. Uh. And I think what we're seeing now is, like, a kind of second, third wave of veganism where it's people who are still very, like, we're activists, we're doing it even though it's not the easiest thing to do. But there's people, like, 30 years ago who are making vegan cheese out of marmite flour and water and it's like it sounds horrible yeah no. <laughs> like we've got it so easy now but the next yeah. generation is going to have it e- even easier and as it becomes more popular and mainstream there's going to be a lot of people who aren't doing it because for the right reasons yeah there's no struggle they just yeah. get to be healthier on it they remain popular they don't lose any friends yeah, and that's going to happen yeah. over the next few years i think mm-hmm. where we're going to see more late comers to it mm-hmm and as it becomes kind of more fashionable and yeah and i think i'm preempting the fact that i'm going to get a little bit annoyed about that because i'm going to be like i've been putting in the work and now beyonce gets if beyonce goes vegan again everyone will be like oh yeah she and she's got all the money behind her everyone will be like oh beyonce turned the world vegan and it'll be like the those early sort of people inspiring the other people to make it easier to make way for that and i've realized it's going to annoy me so i've realized the only way to avoid that is to make it not about me at all. Yeah. And so yeah. if I just remove myself from it in the first place, I never had anything to lose. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Maybe no, no, I thought make, it through a bit too much. No, it about. makes sense though, because it's yeah. true. And I mean, getting annoyed because other people who, you know, can reach a wider audience, but go vegan later, even though, you know, vegan activists have been doing it much, much longer and kind of doing things like going to pig saves yeah. and having to kind of like go through that shit. And yeah. Putting videos out there. And then getting annoyed about the fact that you maybe don't get the credit that you should have. It's not about the credit, is it? It's just about making the content, turning yeah. people vegan. Because that's that's why I make videos. I want more and more people to come to the channel just yeah. so that they connect with like why going vegan is the and best. That, that should be the aim. And I think one of the kind of scary things, especially with like YouTube and Instagram, is it's become um... a liking popularity contest. Yeah, not just that, but the actual algorithms of it is like it's displayed to you how popular a video is. So yeah. people don't click on it, and like, and then the thumbnail, like you have boobs in it, you have something a bit shocking, you have a title written in capitals that says, "Did this really happen?" Exclamation mark, exclamation mark, question mark. And then people see this trend, they realise it's getting more views, and it's almost like rewarding bad behaviour. Like the tacky of the content is the more popular it's going, and then it's, it's teaching people um, to keep behaving in a way that it sort of lacks any real substance yeah mm-hmm. and i'm much more interested I, I love watching some of the smaller youtube channels where they've really they're not interested in doing it as a career they're not trying yeah. to do it to get more views they've just got something they want to say mm-hmm. and it might not take off originally but they'll probably be the people who influence the other channels that then sort of sell out down the line i'm always interested in people with originality in that sense or mm-hmm. because there's so many people who watch katie neistat and be like he's got a lot of views I just, I'll just be Casey Neistat but then it's like we don't need another one no it's true channel what's like the unique thing your About voice you. to bring to the community yeah. and if you make the focus um, the vegan activism like the, the end result of turning more people vegan you're at, you're already sort of whether you wear a mask or not it's not about you it's no. about the results and mm-hmm. and doing stuff like the pig save yesterday is a reminder that what we're doing it for is to like end systematic injustice that's Today, if you stand up to it, you're seen as a bit weird. When, yeah. like, p- people, if it was dogs, you know, 
I, I think, would I be behaving differently if it was a different animal? And I, I get concerned, like, have I still got some sort of indoctrination to behave a certain way? You probably do a little bit, but that's, pro- you know, that's just growing up in the society we've grown in. It's not... And you can only yeah. break you can only break out of it to a certain degree, and you'd only really know that if you were faced with, a, a, you know, a truck full of dogs going to the slaughterhouse. Yeah. Then it would be like a case of, oh, let's see how I feel, and is it different to when I was was faced with a truck full of pigs about to die? Yeah. Because I think I probably would feel different, even though I would still care, and I you know, I still cared yesterday. That's why I keep going back, like it, because it reminds me yeah. why I do it. And the thing is, is also as well as while we're trying to pull up people to our standard, is to always not be like, oh, we we're vegan now. Yeah. It's like veganism is an evolving per- and so like stuff like this, and also like you're big on the zero waste. I feel like you're yeah. uh, the definition of veganism. Um, it's changing, isn't it? No, there is a set definition of vegan. Do you know? No, there, no, there is. I know James uh, vegan at uni like recited it at Bristol. Oh, he learned it, man. Way. Veganism is a philosophy and way of living which seeks to exclude as far as possible and practical, all forms of exploitation of and cruelty to animals for food, clothing, or any other purpose, and by extension, promotes the development and use of animal-free alternatives for the benefit of humans, non-human animals, and the environment. In dietary terms, it denotes the practice of dispensing with all products derived wholly or partly from animals. Yeah, I've been teaching it to people, yeah. 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 Like I try, I put it out on as uh, the beginning of my podcast because mm-hmm. I think it's really important to know what the definition of your words are. And this, mm-hmm. I saw a video the other day. Um, shall I name and shake this? Well, maybe I shouldn't because it gives them more negative attention, encourages it. Mm-hmm. Just say someone. Oh <laughs> God, it's, it's um, yeah, and it was a new channel, maybe like five hundred subs. They were growing really quickly, and they were like, "I hate freely, and this is why." Mm. And so everyone's like, "Oh, I hate freely too." I'll click on that, and it's like, "Who's this helping?" But then she did a v- uh, video on um, her definition of veganism, and she's like, "Oh, it's not a lifestyle, like it's." And I'm just thinking, like, and I'm just thinking, you've never lo- even googled what the actual definition is. Mm-hmm. You're just making it up and it's then so acting hard. like an authority because yeah. you want to feel important to other people before you've even done the research yourself. And I personally think, like, we don't need those people on YouTube. They're a disservice to what veganism is about. Yeah. Um, what, do you think, yeah. what do you think if I say that being vegan is a great start, but it's not enough? Well, I, I think it should never be enough. Like, mm-hmm. it's, it, there's always room for improvement. And yeah. if you don't think there is, then you're claustrophobic. You know, it's like, oh, I'm perfect now. <laughs> there's always elbow room for improvement. And, um, but I feel some ve- people who go vegan actually feel that way. I'm perfect now, yeah. I'm not mean, perfect, but yeah. just like being vegan, like that's it, I'm doing enough and I don't really have to think about a greater impact. Yeah, it should never stop moving. Doing. Like, I mean, one of the things with this movement is like, you don't want to get so, I mean, you're well into the zero waste stuff and I suppose, are you quite careful when you teach people about veganism that you don't go, moon cup, zero waste, like, and everything and like, you know, oh, the paint on the walls and like, you can get, you can actually put them off because it's so different to the life they're living that if you actually just go, I mean, I personally don't talk about zoos, yeah. vivisection or any of that. I just yeah. focus on the diet first and then yeah, yeah. I, I'll kind of bring in the rest. But I say all animal abuse is wrong, but let's start with the diet. I do too. I'm pretty moderate in terms of when, I, you know, when I've done my zero waste videos because I always basically say, don't, be, don't get overwhelmed by it. I, yeah. you know, I'm only doing zero waste now after being vegan for like over a year and a half. And it's something that I've been doing kind of over the last six months at least. And you can't do everything overnight. And, you know, if you tried to do it overnight, you'd have to probably throw loads of shit out. And that's wasteful. Yeah. And it goes against zero <laughs> yeah. waste anyway. And I think yeah. the same about, like, going vegan. Like, I still have stuff that I wear that's made of leather. Yeah. And I made a video about this quite recently because I thought... I remember when I first went vegan and I didn't... And I and I still was wearing, a le- like, leather shoes. And I felt really um, conflicted about that. And I felt like I wasn't a real vegan and like I was in some of the Facebook groups like Vegan UK and I'm not in that anymore because I find it quite toxic and, okay. some, and some of the others because one, one quite militant vegan oh, there's just it's like a thousand people one who, one person who's quite militant had just written that if you still wear leather things after you go vegan you're not vegan but it was really really negative really kind of aggressive and I read it and I thought god I don't need this shit and I thought someone who'd just gone vegan that would scare, that would potentially scare them from being vegan because they would think, oh, I can't do it. Yeah. And it's it's kind of, it's a slippery slope. So that, like with Zero Waste, whenever I'm making videos, I just say, don't get overwhelmed. Do the small steps first. Yeah. Because every change you make has a big difference. And you'll gradually, like, it will be a ripple effect and you will notice yourself 
seeing more and more things in your life that you can switch from disposable to yeah. reusable. So I don't think I'd, I... I mean, tell me, guys, if you disagree with how I kind of introduce Zero Waste to you, but I hope that when I talk about it, I kind of share information in a way that you don't feel overwhelmed. Just seeing how you live is, like, quite... I feel more inspired, like, ah, oh, that's quite easy. I could do that in my life. And you're almost, like, showing that it's easier than yeah. buying... Um, products with uh what's the term with uh planned obsolescence mm -hmm. yep. and like actually you take more pride in the item you know it's going to last like ideally forever yeah like, you're really taken with my stainless steel flask, yeah, yeah i think it's cool i want yeah. one now and yeah. like it's it makes a lot of sense and i think um i mean that's the thing a hundredth monkey people they'll always find a problem with anything new and they'll they'll cross their arms and there's a resistance mm -hmm. but if something's better and it's a better design i can't see any reason why i wouldn't want to change so yeah. if you kind of go like this makes more sense mm -hmm. i'm like okay let's go like and I, I think because I'm like traveling a lot with my activism and I'm not like, there's not a lot of stability place, in my life. Yeah. yeah. But then there are things that I could do and like, you're very good at sort of just introducing those and kind of meeting me where I'm at. Cause I'm not going to suddenly like have a bag full of mason jars. <laughs> no, 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 no. It'd be mental. And I, yeah. and I don't think, I don't think most of the zero waste community would, would expect that either. Yeah. yeah. You, you've got to do what you can do and, and not beat yourself up about every change you could potentially make, yeah. which would then inconvenience the way you're living. Yeah. So it's kind of, it's just a balance, really. I'm not completely zero waste yet. I don't think I'll ever get to the stage where I'm as zero waste as someone like... I really like the term zero waste. Yeah. I think the term zero waste is great. And it should be the same... Uh, like, being vegan is not about being perfect. Veganism is the... Yeah, exactly. The uh, unachievable end goal. And zero waste is probably like... There's always going to be an element of waste in your life. But if yeah, the course. end goal is zero waste, at least you're aiming... Per to, like, I always think of it as like archery. You don't go like... I'll try and hit the target. You go, I'll try and hit the middle and then you might hit the target. Mm. But if you try and hit the target, you miss the target completely. <laughs> so it's good to like have the very centre as the, the end goal and yeah. zero waste does that. It goes, the aim is zero waste and I'll get as close to that as I can. Yeah, and you're always striving for more and you're always, you know, it allows you to be creative. Yeah. To think outside the box, to think of things that you already have in your life. And just one-time use things, you don't realise yeah. at the beginning how many one-time use objects we go through. And just, yeah, just introducing a few things. But yeah, get the flask, yeah. I'd say. That can Do you ever something. get angry at people? It, does it get a bit like veganism where you see people just throwing plastic wraps away? Like, do you ever get like, uh, does the world look a bit different as a result of it getting your head into zero waste? It doesn't get me angry because I haven't always thought like this. So I think now yeah. I it's just, it's made me think I used to be those people too. Yeah. And so it's made me think, well, I've changed so they can as well. Yeah. And it makes me think, it's just it's made me shop differently. So like I never go to like a big supermarket like Tesco or Asda and buy fresh fruit and veg. Right. I go to like little local places yeah. where the, the produce is generally fresher and I'm supporting a small business. It's not in plastic, it's in a cardboard box. Exactly. Really and, and yeah, you I pick love as, all of that. And you pick as many as you want and I take yeah. my own like canvas bags and there's literally yeah. no waste with that. And I like that it's something local and helping a small business too, rather than like a big corporation that doesn't need any more of my money. Yeah. Um and I don't know, it's, I, I have to shop more frequently now. I have to like go like shopping more often. Oh, but, yeah. but if you're if you buying fresh stuff anyway, you shouldn't be buying like loads of fresh stuff for two weeks. You should be getting it every couple of days. Yeah. So that's something I always tell people, like don't do, don't do massive shops because then you waste stuff. And that kind of is really anti uh, I, Yeah, you know? I mean like when people waste meat, it drives me crazy. And yeah. with knowing how the subsidies work with dairy, it's yeah. like there's the whole butter mountains thing in like the, mm -hmm. the early 90s. Yeah where basically the subsidies were designed so that farmers got more money if they wasted the dairy than if they actually sold it because it was all designed to offset any issues they had distributing it. So yeah. it encouraged, they called it like the butter mountains and like dairy mountains where um, pe people were specifically doing it to waste it. And in the middle of that, you've got these cows who are having their young taken away from yeah. them, being pumped their whole life before they're executed when they're of no use anymore. Yeah. And just so that we can waste it, because it's and it, like it's insane. He, and then when you start realizing that humanity is insane, I think. Yeah. And like the the waste of food, but I see vegans waste a lot of food, and it's something I was always brought up to be like. I mean, my mom, my mom is like terrified of wasting stuff, and I think she doesn't actually understand how the universe works, where things do go. It's cyclical. Like she sees water go down the plug hole, and she's like, "It's gone forever." And I'm like, "Mom, it's not quite that." <laughs> no. But in a sense, there's just an inefficiency to it. It's yeah. how we use that energy. Mm -hmm. And it can be so inefficient that it means that it does result in other people going hungry while other people just take the back of their fridge out and put it straight into a bin bag. Yeah. It's which, mad. Which is what all my neighbours do. And I know sometimes when I put my waste out because I really recycle and separate everything and I've really minimised 
the like general waste that would end yeah. up in landfill to like it's not it, I'm not completely there yet like it's definitely going to improve even more but everyone around here like they don't even recycle they don't have recycle bins they just shove everything yeah. in the green bins which is just straight to landfill that pisses me off because yeah, okay, I, I, right. I think because I, I think I'm doing all I can and I can only cancel out maybe one other household yeah. I can't cancel out like several households I've so, started watching Zero Waste Ninja as well no her oh yeah yeah, yeah Nina she's, yeah, yeah she's yeah, cool yeah, she's cool I like her yeah, so I'm starting to. She was in London, them. but she's moved now, so she's going. Yeah. She's relocating to New York. Yeah. Hi, but Nina. Yeah, a few zero waste channels <laughs> popping up, and you're a really good one. <laughs> and um. Emmy, sustainably vegan. Oh yeah, Emmy, yeah, yeah. she's really Emmy, good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, of course, she does a whole bunch of stuff on it. I almost forgot about it then. And Violent Vegan talks about it a little bit. You know him? Yeah, I've uh, actually only just discovered his channel. Yeah, yeah. He's just a whole mix of stuff, but like mm-hmm. zero, he lives the zero waste lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Like, and uh, the way he explained it is like, um, why? it's kind of horrible when you think about yourself just existing, consuming things while you exist, and then this kind of back-end slug trail of you just being a mountain of plastic. Yeah. <laughs> and then that's your legacy, and it will be there after you're dead. And it was like, whoa, yeah, when hundreds, you think about that I way. mean, hundreds and hundreds of years after. You know, the, the nappies that our parents would have used mm. on us when we were babies will be in a landfill whoa. somewhere now. Yeah, <laughs> think about that shit. It's gross, isn't it? That's, that's intense. Yeah. Is, uh and it's one of those things where like we can't see our own blind spots mm-hmm. and veganism is about encouraging people to be like you love animals but you're eating them yeah, <laughs> and yeah. I think like zero waste is kind of going you don't like waste but you're causing it daily and like what, it's kind of painful to realise you're wrong but then actively changing that is quite relieving mm-hmm. and it's something that I definitely want to do more and the more yeah. I become aware of it this um, there's a really nice sort of like little rhyming couplet that uh, I, has stayed with me is um it's kind of like even though the human population's got so big, it's like uh, there's enough for everyone's need, just mm-hmm. not enough for everyone's greed. <laughs> That's the and so it's that kind of inequality. If you're not, if you're taking more than you need and then you're putting in the bins, the, that energy should be going somewhere else, mm-hmm. whether it's food or whatever it is. You know, it's just it's just a waste. And sadly, we live in a, a society where. Um, people believe like they get taught they have a demand for things that they don't yeah. and they end up chucking out their iPhone 6 as soon as there's an iPhone 7 one, yeah. mm-hmm. and it's just uh, it's unnecessary uh, I really hate planned obsolescence mm-hmm. it drives like I hate bad design mm-hmm. um, but I still do contribute towards it so I suppose I'm like someone who says I love animals but then I eat them like I, I, I maybe I should start calling myself a zero waste person like attributing my values to yeah, but basically. You, you can call yourself a transitioning zero waste, so that's how I refer to myself still. Transition. You're like a vegetarian zero waster. <laughs> waster. <laughs> a zero waster. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. If, yeah, all right, I'll do that. Yeah. Because then people won't expect you to have done everything. You're kind of still discovering things. I'm aiming but, for zero. Yeah. Yeah. Almost zero waste. And on that note... Yeah. <laughs> I've been playing with this the whole yeah, time. How are, you, how are you doing with that? You seem it's, to be enjoying it. It's quite fun to hold, but I have no use for it. Um, <laughs> but could now, could but someone now, with IBS know, use that on their arse? Uh, that is a question that I've been for. <laughs> I'm going to say no. Yeah. I'm going to say no. I don't know about IBS. I don't know why I brought that up. I was I just think- trying to... I was looking at it and I was like... I like this, but I have no use for it. And then I was trying to think like... Do you have IBS? Well, I was thinking like, if I if I ate a lot of the wrong foods, I reckon I could achieve it. Yeah, my mum used to have IBS and then she went vegan. She didn't have any more, but she had it for like 25 years. Whoa. And doctors never told, like said, oh, maybe you should think about what you're eating. And then she went vegan last Doctors November. don't know very much about health. No. That's the reality <laughs> no, of it. Like don't. actual proper thriving health. They don't know what the hell they're doing. No. Yeah, it's dairy, man. Dairy makes people have IBS. You heard it here first. And on that note, thanks very much, VR, for being on the channel. (laughs) Until next time, guys. Love and light. (laughs) Do (laughs) you? Yeah, I played with that way too much. I want to start before that by saying I don't only live vegan. And this is not me saying I'm a better vegan than you which is fantastic because it means you can practice different folds. And if you get a new cup and your period isn't going to, you know, arrive for a couple weeks, it means you can still practice and you can still see.